Today we'll be talking about oogenesis, a cell division cycle exclusive to females. Oogenesis takes place in the ovaries and starts with a diploid cell called an eugonium. Eugonia have 23 chromosome pairs, but each chromosome only contains one chromatin. Therefore, the total quantity of chromatids is 46. Before birth, eugonium cells reproduce through mitosis. Some of them reproduce into primary oocytes, which are immature egg cells. These diploid primary oocytes, which contain 92 chromatids containing 46 chromosomes, begin meiosis. The process of meiotic division stops before puberty. During puberty, a series of hormonal events cause a change in the environment around the primary oocytes, causing them to complete meiotic division. However, this division is unequal and the cytoplasm is not divided equally among both cells. As a result, there will be a large oocyte and a small cell. The small oocyte created in this process is called a polar body and will degenerate. The larger oocyte, which is called the secondary oocyte, will continue through meiosis. After meiosis 1, haploid secondary oocytes with 46 chromatids and 23 chromosomes are formed. Primary oocytes are contained within masses known as follicles. Primary follicles are composed of one layer of granulosa cells that surround the oocyte. As time goes on, the granulosa cells form more than one layer. When fluid-filled vesicles are introduced, the structure is called a secondary follicle. When the fluid-filled vesicle forms a single antrum, the structure is called a mature follicle. During ovulation, the oocyte is released from the ovary that contained it through a rupture in the mature follicle. It is still surrounded by some granulosa cells. Once released, the secondary oocyte has entered meiosis II. Before this, the process of meiosis I has taken place. Now let's talk about that. During prophase 1, the chromatin condenses into chromosomes. The nuclear membrane starts to disappear and the four chromosomes come together in pairs of two, making what is known as a tetrad. Prophase 1 is one of the most important phases of meiosis since it is where crossing over can occur. Crossing over is a random process where the homologous chromosomes exchange chromosomal segments. This process can help make an offspring more diverse and distinct. During metaphase 1, the homologous chromosomes are aligned at the equator. They are being held at their centromeres by spindle fibers. Then, anaphase 1 occurs, where the homologous chromosomes are pulled to opposite poles of the cell by the spindle fibers. Anaphase 1 is crucial to meiosis because this phase is where many of the errors that can occur during meiosis happen. Telophase 1 happens next. In this phase, the homologous chromosomes begin to uncoil and the spindle fibers disappear. Now, cytokinesis occurs, and a nuclear membrane forms around each group of homologous chromosomes. Each of these new cells is now a haploid with 46 chromosomes each. Meiosis II will not be completed unless fertilization occurs. Now, in order to look at meiosis II, let's assume that the egg has already been fertilized. The secondary oocyte is now in the oviduct, where the fertilization may occur. If so, the completion of meiosis II is triggered. The haploid sperm cells and the haploid egg cells have fused to create a diploid zygote. During prophase II, the chromatin condensed to chromosomes and spindle fibers begin to form. Metaphase II has the chromosomes aligned at the equator and held together by spindle fibers. Here is another time where independent assortment can occur. In anaphase II, the sister chromatids divide and move to opposite poles of the cells. This is also considered a vital part of meiosis. Telophase II occurs where the chromosomes uncoil, the spindle fibers disappear, and a nuclear membrane forms around the chromosomes, resulting in one haploid cell with 23 chromosomes in each of the four cells.